Uh, let's get to Zoom now and speak to uh, my colleague who's been following this story keenly for us. Joseph Akable is also part of our legal team here at Media General. Um, Joseph, very good afternoon to you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, first of all, for the uninitiated and those who are not following, what does this mean? Does that mean Dr. Kesel Atufosin, the minority leader, and Richard Jakpa are free to go? I mean, first and foremost, we have to indicate that the Court of Appeal in its decision uh, did indicate that the two are acquitted and discharged. And I'm currently here at the High Court. Uh, the court was actually supposed to continue hearing the case against Dr. Tufosin and Richard Dapa. Uh, we know that the trial took place yesterday when the Chief of Defense staff testified. A short while ago, uh, the hearing was actually supposed to start at 12. A short while ago, we were in the courtroom where the case was not called at all, but uh, persons who worked within the court have indicated to us that uh, the judge had indicated that hearing was not taking place uh, today in light of the court of appeal decision. And lawyers for Dr. Tufosin were not present. But, uh, their understanding is that the effect of the court of appeal decision is that uh, they've been acquitted and discharged as was ordered by the court of appeal. And the context we know is that the entire trial that is ongoing at the high court is premised on the March 2023 decision of the high court, which you made reference to. Now, the high court in that decision did order that the accused person should open their defense. That is to say that the prosecution has so far left sufficient evidence to meet the required standard at that level such that they ought to provide answers to the court about the allegations that have been leveled against them. They disagreed with the High Court on that level, took the matter over to the Court of Appeal, and now the Court of Appeal has come to the conclusion that, yes, they agree with them that the, the, court, the High Court was wrong in its constitution that there's a case for them to answer. And so, in simple terms, the minority leader and the businessman of the Tijapa are free to go unless the current decision from the Court of Appeal is set aside by the higher court. And a uh, higher court in this case would mean the Supreme Court. So does that mean that the um, Attorney General who is prosecuting this matter, can, can he uh, appeal the appealed case? In fact, we have been checking with our sources within the Attorney General's Department since this decision came out. And we understand a decision is yet to be taken on the next line of action. But yes, the decision is from the court of appeal. And in terms of the hierarchy of the courts, uh, when a matter is decided by the High Court, you can file an appeal at the Court of Appeal. If a matter is decided by the Court of Appeal, you can now file an appeal at the Supreme Court. And when the Supreme Court decides, you can go for a review. So where we are currently is at the Court of Appeal has rendered this decision. And so if the Attorney General takes the view that this is a matter that he wants to have a second bite at, you have to take it up to the Supreme Court for the Supreme Court to look at it. Don't forget the decision from the Court of Appeal is a two-one decision. The Court of Appeal is being constricted by three judges. And so there's always the option of if he wants to go up, especially because of how close this decision is, it poses a 3 0 decision, a 2 1 decision. But our sources tell us that a decision is yet to be taken. We have seen the Attorney General take a similar step in a different matter completely. You recall the trial involving the former CEO of the Cocoa Board, Dr. Stephen Okuni. When the court of appeal took the decision that the trial should start at fresh at the High Court, the Attorney General's office went back to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court set aside the court of appeal decision and directed for the trial to continue at the level that's the average as well. And so this is not a new matter. Again, we can make reference to other cases like Estin Kubik as well. A similar matter, high court come out to the Supreme Court by an application in terms of supervisory jurisdiction. So uh, seeking the intervention of the Supreme Court in various criminal and even civil matters by the current administration, especially the attorney general, is not new. But for now, the information we have is that a decision uh, is yet to be taken on the next slide of that matter. Right. And uh, Joseph Akable, talk to us about how people reacted when this ruling uh, was given by the appeals court. It clearly is a big twist in the tail of this trial, uh, the ambulance trial, which has been ongoing for a few years now. When the ruling came, how did people take it? What are, uh, how are um, lawyers in and around the court premises reacting to it? So first, I'll start from the lawyers specifically in the case. And so for lawyers for Dr. Atoforsen, they are quite excited. They make the point that the decision of the Court of Appeal is consistent with their entire position. And this is important because with the submission of no case ruling, it's a lower threshold. It's at the initial level where the court simply takes a decision whether there's a case for each one side. So they are saying that this even means that that very basic level which the prosecution ought to have met was not really satisfied. But nonetheless, the trial has been going on all throughout. And so they say that this decision confirms their long-standing position that 
It was purely a witch hunt that was taking place. In terms of lawyers for Richard Dakwa, and we had an interaction with uh, Richard Dakwa a short while ago. I'm sure at some point we'll bring that interview to our viewers. They are also quite excited. In fact, the lawyers for Dr. Peter Officers did not even come to the High Court at all. They simply told us that, I mean, they expect the High Court to do the right thing and just terminate the matter completely. But for lawyers for Mr. Richard Dakwa, they came over here to the law court complex, the High Court, because his passport is still in the custody of the court. And so he was hoping that the hearing will take place, then the matter will be struck off for him to get access to his passport. And they are also very excited. Mr. Dakwa told us that the decision of the court is consistent with his view. And he says that, the, he makes the point that there are indeed some judges who are willing to do the right thing in terms of matters of law and good things, and that's what has happened with regards to that. Outside the parties in the case, generally among the court premises, a lot of people who are not even connected to this case were simply coming over uh, to the financial court to trying to find out whether the hearing would take place because they were all curious and they couldn't understand how the court material matter connects to the high court matter. And that is why we've been trying to provide that clarification that look, the submission of no case which effectively resulted in the trial continuing, which is what has been now set aside by the court party, which effectively means that the matter at the high court shall basically terminate unless a decision of the Supreme Court comes with regards to that particular outcome from the court party matter. Right. Thank you so much uh, for that uh, report.